I did think of one other announcement for you. Uh, next week we are going to have a shortened service, if I remember to make it shorter. And that's because um, usually the week of uh, the start of school, we try and do our prayer service for the school up at the school. I didn't feel like putting the burden on the administration this year. They've got enough going on to ask whether we can use some facilities up there. So um, what we're going to do next week is hopefully a shortened service here, and then we will go out and um, it. If you want to, you can drive around the school, have a time of prayer around the school for the, the students, for the families, for the administration, for everybody. And that way, now with people being able to drive, they can go down to Bronson and pray for that school down there too. Um, so be prepared for a supposedly shortened service next week and then a time of prayer before Bible study. So um, hopefully that works out for us this year. But I just wanted to let you know and let the people at home know that that is going to be a possibility for next week. So um, make sure you have gas in your cars. Seat belts are always somewhat required. And we'll be safe. Um, so be prepared for that. Our service for today is a modified version of Divine Service Setting 1. We've been doing this for most of the pandemic, so it should be pretty familiar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in His great mercy has given His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you, and for His sake He forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We read responsibly, aren't we? But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord! As for me, I have set my King on Zion my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. We continue with our Kyrie. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the, the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life that we may boldly confess him to be the Christ and steadfastly walk in the way that leads to, to life eternal. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 51. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you are hewn. 
and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all her waste places, and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look to the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment. And they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual for today. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Our epistle is from Romans chapters 11 and 12. O the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and how inscrutable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him, and through him, and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our verse for today. Alleluia! You are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ himself being our cornerstone. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Our hymn for today is Built on the Rock, hymn 645.
Our text for today is from Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Here ends our text. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the great things that I get to do as a pastor is to do something that the world and most people hate. It's to tell people, settle down, and stop thinking of yourself as the greatest. Because the world and our sinful self, they tell us that we should be number one, that we should be thought of as first, that we want to be great, that we want to be thought of as great, and we want to be in a position of power, and we want to be thought of as this wonderful, amazing person that was put here so that everyone around us could be blessed. And Paul says it in a way that kind of just puts a little backhand to it. He says, by the grace that was given to me, by that undeserved love, by that God's riches at Christ's expense that it was given to me, by that wonderful gift that God gave to me, I get to tell you, stop thinking so highly of yourself. Stop thinking of yourself as the most important thing in the world. Stop thinking of yourself as absolutely necessary for everything to happen. And as happens often in sermons and stuff, you guys are getting a sermon that I need preached to me. See, pastors most often preach the sermons that they need to hear. And sometimes... I kind of go, well, if, I don't, if I'm not there, then this won't happen, or it won't happen right. You know, in setting up all of this stuff, what would happen if I wasn't here one morning and I had to show up right at church time? Would all of this get set up so that we could have church? Yes. Dan is sitting here like this, but he's watched it enough, and so is Roger, that I might have to change a few things when I get here, but... Eh, it gets set up. You know, um, earlier this week, we had some rock that needed to be moved. And I was told repeatedly by one member, you shouldn't have to do, actually two members, you shouldn't have to do that. You shouldn't be here to do that. I was, the kids had fun playing in the rocks and everything, but, you know, that's beside the point. But in my ministry, I keep forgetting the men of, uh, the lesson that I learned from my parents that the pastor is not the most important person and that I'm not necessary for ministry. I'm not necessary for things to move ahead here at Bethel. You know, if I wasn't here the day that the chairs came, would the chairs have still gotten moved into the sanctuary? Pat? Sure. Yeah, they would have. I didn't need to be there. But sometimes I get that big head and I'm thinking too much of myself. And I think, well, but I need to be there. I need to do this. I need to de be there. And, and, and not just supervise, but I need to help out. I need to show that I'm part of this family. Sometimes I think too much of myself. And sometimes I know all of you think that too. Not too much of me, but too much of yourselves. None of you think too much of me. But we get this big head that says, well, I'm necessary. If, I, if I'm inconvenienced, then it's other people's fault, and they better fix what is inconveniencing me, or else I'm going to get angry. Nobody better say anything that makes me feel bad or gets my conscience going, because if my conscience is going and it's telling me that I'm actually needing to change, then who are they to tell me that I need to change? Does this sound a little familiar? The most times that pastors get yelled at is when people are actually hurt for being told the truth. The truth that the way you're doing things might not be the best way. And there is a better way. There is God's way. And God's way is always best. And so 
Paul continues, he says, You each have your own part. Don't think of yourself as the only person, the only thing that can happen in this world, the only thing that is necessary for God's kingdom to be furthered. He says, you each have your own part. So don't think of yourself as any more important than you really are because God's kingdom and God's family is made up of many different parts and many different types of people. You've got the people who preach. You've got the people who teach. You've got the people who exhort. You've got the people who support. You've got all of these people that are part of God's kingdom and they're all necessary. And he was talking to the Romans and in Rome everybody was extremely self-important. They all had big egos. They had to to survive in that society. And Paul's saying, check your ego at the door. Christianity doesn't need it. Christianity doesn't want your ego. It doesn't want your self-importance. Christianity says all other people are important and you're not. At least from your standpoint. And that's how we live in even marriage situations where if we think of ourselves as most important in our marriage, then we're not actually married. We're just selfish. But if we put the other person first, their needs, not necessarily their wants, because sometimes their wants can be bad for them, but what is necessary for their life and for their faith growth especially, when we put that first over our own comforts and our own peace, then we're actually acting as the married couple that God wants us to be. And sometimes that can take the form of nagging your spouse to say, Hey, did you read today? Are you coming to worship with me? Are you coming to Bible study? Are you going to pay attention? And sometimes it can take the form of encouraging, saying, Thank you. That was very well done. I appreciate that you did this for me. Because you realize that the other person is necessary. And so today, my message to you is very simple. Get over yourself. To yourself, you are the least important person in the world. Does anybody remember what we have the acronym JOY, what it stands for? Jesus, Jesus, others, yourself. And... The wonderful gift we have in Christ is the fact that by the grace that God has for us, God doesn't think of you as the least. God doesn't think of you as the lowest of the low. He doesn't think of you as somebody who is unimportant. But He tells you in your life, think of yourself last. Because you already have somebody that thinks of you as the greatest and has declared you to be the greatest and declares you to be righteous in his sight. You already have somebody who is giving you everything you need in your life to move forward and to do what he has called you to do, to be who he has called you to be. You already have God giving you every blessing that you need for this life. Sometimes the blessings look like curses, but they're blessings. You already have the one who created everything building you up into the person that he wants you to be. And in building you up to the person that he wants you to be, sometimes it can take knocking you down a little bit. Look what he did to the nation of Israel. We're we're studying Job right now in Bible study. Look what he did to Job. And look what he allowed to happen to Job. Just so that at the end of the book, we could have the renewed Job who has a different kind of faith than he had at the beginning of the book. And with the people of Israel, how many times did he have to knock them down so that he could actually build them up? He loves us enough to do that for us. He loves us enough to 
sometimes push us away so that we can come back to Him. And we have it in the verses right before the verse that I'm reading to you today, where Paul says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Present your bodies. Present everything you have. This is a new concept for people of God. In the Old Testament, it was expected that you follow all the sacrificial rules. You follow all of the ceremonial rules. And a lot of that had to do with things like, well, at this time you sacrifice two doves and a pigeon. At this time you sacrifice a bull. At this time you sacrifice whatever. And at this time you sacrifice an unblemished lamb. But in the New Testament, for the Christians who are now the real people of God, how much does he say? And when does he say to give it? Does he ask us every Sunday to bring a couple pigeons with us so that we can sacrifice them on the altar? Thankfully not, because I really don't want to have to deal with all that. But he says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Take your whole life. Present it to God because of the mercy that he has shown you. Because of the sacrifice he made by putting his son on the cross for you. Your life is his. He paid for it. And he's the one who's taking care of it. He always has been, even before you were a Christian. He was taking care of you before you knew him. And then he says, Paul says here, Do not be conformed to this world. Don't look at its values. Don't look at its way of doing things. Because its way of doing things will lead you to one place, and that place is too hot for you to handle. But be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Make God's word your word. Put it in you. Let it live through you. Let it breathe in you. And let it change who you are and how you react to the situations of this world. And then he continues, that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The only way to know the will of God is to know God. And that by testing through his word and through his ways, then you can actually try and figure out what his will is for your life. And to realize that his will sometimes is to lead you into a place that you don't want to go. So that other people can be blessed. So today, we know that we have a Savior. We know that we have a God who loves us more than anything. He loves us so much that He sent His only Son so that you could be His child. His Son paid the price for all of our sins. His Son paid the price for your ticket to heaven, into His presence. And we remember that, but remember that with humble joy. Realizing that that doesn't make us any better than anybody else. But in fact, that makes us the servant of everybody else. Just like Jesus said at the Last Supper. When he washed the disciples' feet and he made himself the lowest servant of the house. He said, you don't understand what I'm doing for you now. But soon you will. And you will do this for everyone else. So we get to stop thinking of ourselves first and truly live out the joy that God has for us. Where we put God first, others second, and ourselves dead last. So that they can do the same for us in our lives. So, get over yourself. God loves you. 
That sounds like a contradiction in this world and to what the world and our sinful ears want to hear. But what more joy could you have from being able to say, God loves me with everything. So I don't need to love myself. That's a joyful statement to me at least. Hopefully in your life it can become one for you too. And we get to go and proclaim that same joy to other people. And what a great gift it is that we have been called by God to give His gifts and give His grace out to all those people around us. We don't want to hoard it. We don't want to keep it for ourselves. We want to give it away. Because that's what it's for. So, by the grace of God, stop thinking so highly of yourself. And realize that you are important. You just might not be the most important in your life. But you are the most important in somebody else's. And you have been declared to be most important by God. I know. I like confusing you. So we go with God's grace and His mercy leading us forward and letting us do the things that He has called us to do. In His name. Amen. May the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Before we get to the prayer of the church, we have some new things for church. We have these nice, wonderful chairs. that They were delivered this last week, and they are some of them are actually somewhat in place in the sanctuary. And before we start using them in the sanctuary, it doesn't hurt to dedicate them. So, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful things that you give us. We thank you for the opportunities that we have to modify our sanctuary so that other people can be welcome to join us for worship and be able to fit in with us better. We ask you, Lord, that you would bless the use of these chairs that you have so graciously offered to us and allowed us to get so that more people can be welcomed and so that we as a congregation can do more things. Uh, watch over all who need them and all who use them and help them to be a tool that we use to show others your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And if you want to see how comfortable the new chairs are, this one will be out here until the platforms are taken down. So um, you have a little bit of time after worship to, to come test them out. Um, the people who deliver, helped us deliver them, they said that the, the two rows or four rows that we've got will now be the new fought over chairs in the sanctuary. So, no, they're not in the back. So, sorry, Kara. All right, in our prayers for today, uh, we pray for those people who are dealing with the tragedies in this world, and also we pray for those dealing with the joys of this world. Uh, for uh, Especially we pray for the family of Jonathan Geitz. This is Pastor Geitz's son from uh, Grace and Lamar's. He died last Sunday, and his funeral was Thursday? Wednesday. So, um, But he was uh, buried on Saturday, so uh, up in North Dakota. So we pray for their family. Uh, we also pray for those people who are dealing with the fires out west and for the all the storms that we've been having lately, and the people dealing with the aftermath of that with the, is it Dereco, Derecho, Derecho? Um, that thing that happened out by Cedar Rapids and also the hurricanes that have conversed on Houston and all the other things that are going on and we also will be praying for our schools because our local schools start tomorrow or at least the LB schools start tomorrow and we'll pray, be praying for all those people in college too because why not so let's pray Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you've given us. We thank you for calling us to be your children, for giving us your grace and your mercy so that we can know that in this life, to you, we are important. And so that we can live a life that shows others that they are more important than we are. We ask you, Lord, that in everything, you would help us to think less of ourselves 
and think more of you. To put your word first in our lives and to put your ways first in all the things that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask you to be with all those things that are going on in this world. We ask you to give wisdom to those in leadership positions. We ask for your blessing to be upon those who are making decisions for anything that's going on right now in the um, COVID pandemic. And we also ask for your safety to be upon those who are helping out in our communities, especially our doctors, our nurses, and all those who are taking care of us and all those people who are doing their job throughout this pandemic when it's so necessary to keep things moving. Watch over them, protect them, and guide them into your grace and your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you, Lord, that you would be with all those who are mourning especially the family of Jonathan, as they mourn his loss, help them to continue to look to you and look at you for strength and mercy during these times of trouble in their lives. We ask you that in all things, you would help us to point each other and build each other up in your word and in your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you be with those people who are dealing with all of the natural disasters that are happening. Um, we don't know why these happen. We don't need to know why. We just need to know that your, your hand of patience and your hand of peace is in these situations. We ask you to be with those people dealing with the fires out west. We ask you to be with those people dealing with the aftermath of storms and those who are still in the storms right now. That you would protect the people and that you would open the eyes of your people so that they can go and help in these times of need. We thank you for those teams that have been sent to places like Cedar Rapids to help clean up. And we thank you for their service and for their willingness to serve others. We also ask you, Lord, that you would offer us opportunities to go and help other people in their times of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, tomorrow LB starts school, and we know that for this it is a time of trouble, a time of trial, and a time of worry for a lot of people. We ask you to calm their hearts. Help people realize that worry and anxiety doesn't help others learn to love you and learn to point to you. We ask you, Lord, to calm us down and help us to look to you and your guidance and your strength, to know that in all things, no matter whether it seems bad or good to us, you are there. And we ask you, Lord, that you be with all the students, be with the faculty, the staff, be with the administration, and be with the families as they now change into this weird year of 2020 learning and continue to move things forward and help people be gracious in all of these times of struggle and dealing with new ways of doing things. Lord, in your mercy. We ask you also, Lord, that you would be with all college students and all the other schools that are starting and moving around right now, um, that they too would be blessed and be able to make it through these times of um, weirdness, especially those who are first year college students and who are having to deal with so many new changes and so many new fears. Lord, in your mercy. Guide us, Lord. Direct us forward as your family here at Bethel and help us to be motivated by your love to get into your mission field and to do those things that you have put in front of us to do. Lord, in your mercy. All these things we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, bless your word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and peace to convert those not yet your own, and to confirm those who have come to saving faith. May your word pass from ear to heart, and from heart to lip, and from the lip to the life, that, as you have promised, your word may achieve the purpose for which you send it. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace.
Amen. Our final song is the doxology. Most of you should know it by now. <laughs>